Yeah, so we did a run through on Saturday. First full speed practice was Sunday. Gave them off Monday for finals. Um, then practice yesterday and today. We'll practice again tomorrow. Um, and then we'll take the day off on the travel day on Friday and then get three practices in at the bowl site. Um, this is how we've done it the last three years, and I really like this format. Uh, get a, plenty of work, but at the same time keep the guys fresh. And uh, so we kind of transitioned to Toledo today. Uh, last few practices was actually more on us, getting back to the speed of the game and getting physical, getting our edge back, uh, trying to make it a little light, you know, just in terms of having fun and getting things, get them spiced up a little bit. Um, I think that's the point this time of year. And, you know, somewhat of an emotional roller coaster this season. You know, some of the biggest moments in school history. And then, you know, your head coach leaves, which is a part of this game. And um, so just trying to make sure these guys enjoy this week and hopefully go get a win. I've seen a lot of things on social media. You talk about trying to make it fun. Water balloons fight. Yeah. You know, the, the GAs going against yeah. each other one on one. How yeah. important is that then to try to, to get these guys back on the right frame of mind? Uh, you know, big, you know, I, I like the competition part of it too. You know, you can have fun and still compete. Uh, the GAs doing stuff I like because the situation we're in, a lot of those GAs are coaching those guys on their own, you know, so they're building those relationships and, you know, being a young coach when I was their age, you kind of have a special relationship with those players because you're not that far removed, right, from the situation they're in. Um, so uh, just I like getting those GAs involved in that stuff because it, it creates a lot of fun. And uh, those players really love to see those guys getting out there. So uh, it, it's been great. You know, we're not just lollygagging, though. It's not just all sunshine and rainbows. We're working hard, too. Um, but that's what I told them. You know, guys, we can have fun and still be disciplined and uh, focus on winning a football game. You mentioned uh, the emotional roller coaster the season's been. But, you know, going back to the New Mexico State game and, and you know, all the highs and lows yeah. since then, uh, what's been your main message to the team as you've kind of navigated these past few weeks? You know, I'd say probably about week five or six, we were probably about as good as anybody in the country, you know, um, from a group of five standpoint, whenever that was, whenever we got ranked and all that stuff. I felt like we were hitting on all cylinders, really on both sides of the ball. That was when we were hitting a little bit of a stride on offense too. And uh, at some point, we just kind of lost that edge there at the end, you know, and uh, trying to get that edge back. That's been our emphasis, you know, our, our edge, our spirit, whatever you want to call it, confidence, all that stuff. Um, just trying to get that back and kind of refocus and get to that point's been my been my focus. Okay. Let's jump on a line real quick. Anthony Romano uh, has a question for you. Anthony, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Anthony from uh, WDBJ. How you doing? Doing well. How's it going? Good. Um, just for you personally, what, what have the last few weeks stepping in as the interim been like, and, and how do you feel like maybe you kind of stepped into the role and, and grown as a coach over the last couple of weeks? Well, the first thing that's really special for me is I have a really intimate relationship with quite a few of these players because I've been here since I was the first coach boots on the ground when coach got hired. So I've, I've helped recruit every class the last four years and been involved with a ton of them. So uh, just to be the guy standing at the front of the room and see that look in their eyes has been real special for me. And then uh, just the ability to create relation, better relationships with these offensive players because I usually don't get to interact with them like that. And uh, so I've been trying to be really intentional to hang around the offense this week. Um, they don't need my help by any means, but just from a relationship standpoint, uh, be around those guys. So those are probably the two uh, most special things for me, just how much involvement I was with the recruitment of these guys and then being involved with the offense a little bit. And if I could follow up, how do you feel as if the players have sort of handled this whole transition process between Coach Freeze leaving Jamie Chadwell coming in and I'm obviously preparing for a, a game at the end of the month. Um, how, how have they kind of handled all of that kind of up and down roller coaster? Well, I think preparing for a game helps with all that because that, that break we had from the end of the last game until we started practicing, you know, there wasn't a ton of workouts going on because it's dead week, getting ready for finals and things like that. Kind of, I, I always worry about those guys being isolated and, you know, you know, you can convince yourself of anything when you're isolated, right? Uh, in your thoughts. Um, so now that we're preparing for a game and practicing, I think it creates routine and, uh, you know, we're back to, back to doing what we always do. Josh, I wanted to ask you, I mean, you're dealing with transfer portal, you guys, the coaches do things differently. Um, how are you approaching the guys who have entered the portal? Are you letting those guys who are still here play through the bowl game? And how are you handling that? Yeah, I won't dive too far deep into that, um, but it's a case-by-case -case basis, 
You know, what are the reasons they're leaving? How have they performed this year versus how are they handle their business? You know, um, so it'll be a case by case basis. There'll be some guys out there um, that are in the transfer portal that'll play in the game, um, and uh, but there'll be some that won't. Uh, so I, it's just a case by case basis and totally a judgment call by me and Coach Chadwell. So um, I mean, you'll see it'll it'll be fifty fifty. You'll, you'll see a little bit of both out there. What's your communication with Coach Chadwell been like so far? You know, it's kind of it's kind of weird. You know, it's like I got one foot on the 2022 team and one foot on the 23 team because I'm helping him with recruiting while I'm focusing on this team and winning the bowl game. So my my conversation with him has really just dealt with recruiting and the update of our roster. You know, who we're losing. You know, that's when anytime you're a new head coach, you're you're trying to figure out. You know, what are we losing? What do we need to go get? All that type of stuff, right? And so that's really been my role is to update him, hey, we're, we're going to be short at this position. feel like we need a few more of these guys, A, B, and C, versus where the bowl game's totally just a separate deal. He's kind of being hands off with that. What clarity, if any, has he given you as far as 2023 or what he wants you doing right now? Uh, you know, those conversations will stay between us. You know, um, nothing, uh, nothing to report yet. And, uh, the, but those conversations will stay between us. And we've been, we've been in constant contact. Coach, can you talk about your opponent a little bit? I, just, I know you just started on them, but um, what you see, I mean, I'm looking at a dual threat quarterback. Yeah. They look like they're pretty explosive at times down the field. Um, some thoughts on that? Yeah, they, you know, they, they started off really hot. You know, they easily, I think I was telling you yesterday, they easily could be a 10-win football team. You know, um, they lost their last two going into the championship game. Um, so you're talking about a team that easily could have 10, even 11 wins. Um, so uh, just uh, – just really impressed with how they run their offense. Uh, they do a great job of not uh, allowing negative plays, mainly because of how athletic the quarterback is to escape things. And, uh, and then defensively, they're extremely sound and play extremely hard. So a uh, really well-coached football team. Uh, not your typical MAC school, per se. You know, typically when you think of the MAC, you think of like a group of five Big Ten. You know, big, powerful, strong. Not as much going to test you, all, all blades of grass on the field. These guys are not that way. They got a lot of speed. Um, on the outside especially, and at quarterback. So it'll be very similar to a lot of teams we've faced. You saying, or you being an interim head coach, not the only change on the on-field yeah. staff. Uh, what can you shed as far as some of those other guys, uh, maybe some guys you called up as a, from analyst roles and uh, you know how you envision uh, game day rolling for those guys? Yes, yeah, so uh, um, Robert Bala has been elevated to help with the deep secondary. Um, Jordan Cantrell has been elevated to linebackers. I mean, I'm still coaching those guys, but obviously I got other things I'm going. Um, Malik Slater, our graduate assistant, is going to coach the D-line. I'm assistant with that as well, obviously. Um, and then uh, on offense, Jesse Stone at quarterbacks and uh, Zach Chrysler with tight ends. Um, so uh, that's been uh, the main elevations we've had. And then Logan Bradley, obviously, as a quality control, is also helping with the tight ends as well. But uh, really excited for those guys. What a great opportunity, man. Uh, coaching a Division One football game at a young age like that. Um, really, really excited for them. Will some, will some guys be in different spots, like as opposed to boot, field? Yes. That yeah, that's actually something we're going to discuss today. Um, we really wanted to wait until we felt comfortable in the game plan and then uh, talk about where we felt like we needed the most eyes. Um, for adjustments and, and things like that, you know, because obviously when we're on offense, I might be a little less involved in drawing up the adjustments for the defense. I'm still going to call the defense, but, uh, you know, I, I've got to be out there to help manage the clock and things like that. So, Coach Freeze and Coach Austin kind of handled the play calling duties on offense. How do you envision that going? You'll see when we show up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You did mention the Sunday of the bowl announcement that you're going to keep a lot of that play calling responsibility close to the Best, yep. That's still okay. Yes, it is. Yep. Have, you seen, have you seen some of the veterans on your team that you feel like you talk about the ups and downs? Have they taken maybe more of a voice during this time, trying to just kind of make sure, you know, from player to player, everybody's mind is where it needs to be? For sure. You know, I view it as a second senior day. Um, you know, that, that that was not the way we wanted our seniors to go out, you know. So um, that's been an emphasis for me, you know, um, is it's a second senior day. And we get to take these guys down to Florida and try to send them out on a winning note. So, yeah, I've, I've really noticed those seniors, you know, they're, they're chomping at the bit. Obviously, the Scruggs, the, the Durrells, the people like that. Um, just uh, send them out on a high note, you know, it's been obvious. What role have they, have the seniors that the leadership council played in trying to keep everything together in the last – month of transition? 
Uh, a lot. You know, there's been several player-led meetings and things like that, um, holding the guys together. Um, obviously, you got guys leaving or potentially leaving and things like that. So they're trying to make sure everybody's on the same page and to finish strong. Um, they've come to me a lot with things they'd like to see, you know, see us do or adjust a schedule. I'm trying to cater to that pretty well, you know. Um, you know, I'm, I'm what I call an NFL head coach, not for long. So um, while I'm doing it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help out, you know, get these guys to have a great week and maybe we'll structure practice the way that they feel better about it, you know. Um, now I'm not just sitting here taking all these requests in the uh, information box, but uh, I'm going to make sure that um, I structure practice or meetings, travel, all those things the way they, they see it. Still all on to Jermaine. Jermaine, go ahead. Good afternoon, Coach. And again, uh, hope you're doing well today, sir. Uh, Got to ask you, what's the biggest thing you're looking forward to when it comes to this ball game? I just want to see us compete and have fun. Um, I think if we do that, we'll probably win. Um, so uh, if we'll go out there and play with uh, high energy and effort, okay, we, we've got, we're talented enough to go out there and compete with a lot of people. Um, we're playing a good football team, um, but I think we can be hungry and go out there and play with effort and energy. I think, I think we'll like what the scoreboard says at the end. And you also said, you know, you've been there since uh, Coach Freeze has been there. For you personally, what's it like to see the growth of this program and the success that you guys have had over these years? You know, I was telling the story uh, to somebody today. My first day here, um, they were showing me that they were touring the facilities. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a D2 guy. I, I worked D2 ball for seven years. And uh, I go to the indoor, and the weight room is in the goal line to the 20. And then they've taken everything that was in this building, chairs, desks, all that stuff. It's just sitting in the middle of the indoor. So you're sitting there going, man, this is D1 football. And uh, so just to see the, the growth of our program, and we've got a tremendous AD who contributes to that. Um, I don't know if he's ever said no to anything we've asked for. And uh, just to see how we have grown, not from a facility standpoint, just a culture standpoint, the games we've won, the, the level of player we're, we're able to recruit now, uh, is so much different than my first year here. I mean, we were just begging kids to come on visits when we first got here. Now we can be really selective, and uh, you got kids from Power Five schools wanting to come here. So uh, it's just a, you know, it's a tribute to all the coaches that have been here, not just Coach Freeze and uh, and then our administration who contributes to that. Thank you so much, sir. Yes, sir. I mean, I'd obviously like to be better. Um, uh, I think uh, I think we have a plan for that. You know, that's a huge. You know, normally in bowl week, right? You're you're developing those young guys that haven't played all year anyway. You know, this is more we're developing because they're going to have to play in the game, right? It's not just using them in practice. So uh, you'll see some young guys out there probably at different positions. I'm not going to reveal that necessarily because then you know who's not playing. But uh, we'll uh, we'll have some young guys out there at some different positions for sure. Um, but. Uh, I think we've got a plan for who we know is coming to the game, how we can use the depth we have with personnel groupings and things like that. Do you anticipate Ben playing quarterback for them or the rotation? Kind of like uh, I anticipate him playing for sure a lot. Um, you know, the other guy's really good as well. Um, he's definitely got a strong arm. Um, they obviously feel strong about both of them because they keep playing them. So uh, I, I do anticipate him to be out there, yes. I want to ask about two seniors, both yeah. Brooks was here when you guys got here. Undersized at safety, what's he meant to this program in terms of his leadership and helping that? And then you recruited Darrell here, and for him to get an All-American nod in his final college season, what does that mean for the season he's had and what he's been able to do to help that defensive line? The special thing about Scruggs is how resilient he is and how many position coaches he's had, too. You know, you think about it, he had a position coach before we got here, and then it was Scott Simons, and then it was Corey Batoon, and then it was Jack, right? Okay, and three out of those four were different defenses too. So, um, you know, just how resilient he is and intelligent, and to handle that the right way has been really impressive. Obviously, everybody knows about his leadership and stuff like that, and fighting through injuries, all those things. Um, and then Darrell, man, just what a great story for a guy who could have easily, had it not been for COVID, you know, not probably been thrown to the wayside a little bit because of what happened in 20 or 21 being hurt, you know, but because of COVID, he was able to come back. He proved everybody that 2020 wasn't a fluke. You know, I think some people felt like, you know, it's 2020, it's COVID, it's different. You might've just been a flash, 
you know, because of that. But no, he proved this year that he is that guy and uh, just really impressed with how he's handled that, man. I'm excited about him playing in the game. Um, I think a lot of people are questioning whether he playing the game with his draft status and stuff like that. He is one, I'll tell you, he'll be out there so he can get ready. And uh, I'm excited to see him playing the game. You look at Mitchell for them at corner. Is he a guy that can cut the field in half for them? Yeah, you know, I think they're really good in the back end. Um, like I said, they're, they're much faster at skill position than you would expect most MAC teams. And uh, so just really impressed with how uh, they've recruited. And uh, we'll have to make sure that um, we play really fundamentally sound at wide receiver if we want to get off any press look by that guy. I'm looking at your quarterback situation as you have those conversations mm -hmm. with your, your play caller. Yep. Um, how do you assess and how do you make that decision going into this here over the next few days? I think you'll, there's a good chance you'll see all of them. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, I think you'll, you, you get a good chance you'll see all of them and uh, we'll play to their strengths and things like that. Um, so uh, I think I think those guys have had a really good attitude in the first four practices with what we're doing, um, and I'm I'm eager to see them go out there. And you know when you talk about an edge and a spirit and a confidence, you know that's probably the first position group I think of that we're trying to get that back. And uh, so uh, really really excited to see those guys go out there and perform.